Hi, welcome to episode 19 of the Gentle Knitter podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario. Today is Sunday, October 15th. I'm super happy to record today. It's been a while. I had really hoped that my podcasting frequency would improve with um, a decision I took. I talked about it last time. I recorded that I would put my sample knitting work on hold for a while and just concentrate on uh, doing some selfish knitting and I have done that. I've been very busy. I've done a lot of knitting. Uh, unfortunately I have not had a lot of knitting luck and have had to rip out a lot of things that I had started. Um, I think I just, you know, I, like I mentioned last time, it was a bit of a rough summer, um, and I'm just starting to get my mojo back uh, in many ways. Uh, things are going better just generally. I'm taking better care of myself. I have started exercising again, which is wonderful. That alone just makes such a huge difference because um, just my energy levels are better and my mood is better and so my ability to kind of deal with stress and just life in general is uh, is very much improved. So that's been great um, and like I said my knitting has sort of taken a while to sort of get back uh, in the groove, but I, I think I'm in it now and uh, I'm also very excited um, because I am going to Rhinebeck next weekend and I cannot wait! I'm so excited. I didn't think I was going to go this year and um, just things just lined up and it was like the stars, you know, there was, I, I guess I was just meant to go this year. So I'm very, very excited. I cannot wait to uh, hopefully meet a lot of you uh, and uh, give you a hug and uh, just uh, have a chat and of course um, meet some friends and uh, see some animals and fondle some yarn um, and eat some cider donuts. So I'm, I'm really, I'm thrilled. I, I, I really need this little kind of getaway um, and it's given me a lot to look forward to. So if you are going to Rhinebeck, like I said, please come up and say hello to me. I am, um, I'm an introvert, but I'm, I'm very comfortable in social situations and I love meeting you. I will also be at the uh, podcasters meetup on the Saturday. I believe it's at one on the hill that the sort of the hill that you see when you when you walk in the main gate. And uh, I will be there with my basket. For those of you who were there last year, you might remember uh, I had a basket full of um, Canadian chocolate bars, or what you call candy bars, uh, just the little mini Halloween ones. Um, I know that a lot of Americans um, have have a fascination or or a love of Canadian chocolate bars and you know what I totally agree they are way better and you know this is coming I, I am biased I recognize but um, I don't know we just do it better I think it's um, a lot of our chocolate bars are uh, sort of Cadbury um, they're owned by Cadbury I guess and so you get a lot of things that um, you also find uh, in Britain and um, slightly different. The packaging is different and all that, but um, we have um, the two that for me stand out are Coffee Crisp and Wonder Bars. And those are my absolute favorite chocolate bars. And so I bought two huge boxes of, uh, of the mini Halloween minis and I will have my basket and I will be giving out chocolate to whoever needs it. You know, it takes a lot of energy to go through all of those stalls, those wonderful stalls in Rhinebeck. So please come by, have some chocolate and say hello. I would really love that. 
So because I'm going to Rhinebeck, I have been working on the obligatory Rhinebeck sweater. And originally I wanted, um, I had talked about a sweater last time that I, and I'd showed it to you that I had just started working on. And so that sweater is now this. <laughs> um, and I, I'm blanking on the name of that cardigan. Oh my goodness! Uh, let me look it up, and I will, I will be right back. So the sweater I was uh, working on with this yarn was the Stillwater cardigan by Marie Green, and um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the pattern. It is a, um, it's a raglan construction. So that number one was the one of the problems with it because I. I know this, but sometimes I still go ahead and, and knit raglan sweaters. They don't fit me well. And um, this one, I had some hopes because the, uh, the, the shoulder portion of the raglan um, had uh, quite a lot of stitches. And normally, or oftentimes with a raglan, you start out with very few stitches and then kind of work your increase out when it's a a top down sweater. Um, and this one, it, it had quite a lot of uh, shoulder stitches right from the get go, so I thought it would fit me better because of that. Um, however, I was knitting a larger size because I am, I'm very pear shaped and I wanted it to fit me on the bottom. And, um, and because of the whole raglan, I find it's usually too small here also. I thought, I'll just go with the larger size. But really what I should have done is picked a smaller size for the top and then uh, increased out um, at the bottom, which is what I always usually do. Um, but I was just concerned because of this whole raglan issue. But what ended up happening is that my sweater, um, I got actually almost to the bottom of the body and I had this, the sleeve stitches on a holder and I, I should have tried it on sooner. Actually, I did try it on sooner and because you know, you don't have a lot of the body in the sleeve, it was, it was a bit hard to tell, but once I had uh, more body done. I tried it on again. I could see that the sleeve stitches were, there were way too many sleeve stitches. The body fit me like pretty, not tight, but like no, not a lot of positive, positive ease, but the sweater, the sleeve was coming out a lot. And I thought, oh God, I'm going to have this like somewhat, somewhat fitted cardigan with kind of this belling sleeve and it just it wasn't right. Um, the other thing about the pattern that I didn't love is that uh, the detail in the front is a faux cable so you're actually not um, moving stitches or crossing stitches over and then and then knitting to create this cable. You're doing um, decreases and yarn overs to kind of move, shift the, the stitches over. And it creates kind of a flat, it, it does look like a cable, but it it's quite flat. And I really like a real cable that has that kind of extra dimension. And uh, so I wasn't like super in love with the cable detail or the faux cable detail, if you will. And then the third element that wasn't really working for me was the yarn. Um, this yarn is yarn that I bought at uh, the Twist Festival. It's called uh, La Bergère and the, the company is Ficelle. And it is a uh, yarn that comes from the Camorasca region of Quebec. And it's a very beautiful, very, very rustic yarn. Um, to get gauge for the sweater, I was knitting it a little bit tight and it was yielding a very stiff, very rigid fabric. And I, yeah, I didn't love that. I think that because it was also uh, slightly fitted, um, it was, um, sorry, I'm distracted because my husband was walking by there. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was kind of stiff, but also 
a little tight, so very close to the body, and it is not, it, it just, it wasn't suitable. I think I have a lot of this, and I think it would be great for a really big, oversized kind of coat type of cardigan that you would wear, you know, as a, as almost like a jacket. So, uh, you know, I will eventually use it, but um, it just wasn't appropriate for what I wanted. So I ripped it out, and that's totally fine with me. I, uh, you know, I had time to cast on another project, and this one I am almost done, so I know I will get it done, and I'm extremely happy with this, and I cannot wait to cast it off and, uh, and wear it for Rhinebeck. So this is the Woodford's Cardigan, and uh, it's a pattern by Elizabeth Doherty. Uh, you might know her as Blue Bee Studio on Instagram. And uh, it's a pattern she designed for uh, Brooklyn Tweed. It, it came out quite, quite a few years ago, but it's always been in my queue. It's one of my, I've always eyed this pattern. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite Brooklyn Tweed designs. And um, so I decided it was time for my own and so you know it's still on the needles so it's not gonna look all that great but I basically um, finished the almost the entire body I have about an inch left to do on the bottom skirt but this is the back um, and I love it has like these braid details that are um, sort of at the different uh, sections of the sweater. I think there's also one uh, on the sleeve at, at some point. But um, it's got beautiful texture. Um, so you've got like a broken rib and then you have a different type of uh, ribbing, um, almost like sort of brioche -y a little bit. And um, I think once it's blocked out, it's going to be very gorgeous. I actually did steam the collar, the top part when I tried it on. So these, uh, this part's a bit more even and you can kind of see that you get a slightly more ridged texture with this ribbing and then this is a little bit um, smoother. And I, I love it. I, I've tried it on, it fits beautifully. Um, like I said, I, I just have a little bit about an inch left to do on the skirt, the bottom of the sweater, and then basically pick up and knit the sleeves. So I do have to get going so that I <laughs> finish this, but I am confident that I'll be able to finish it. The yarn I'm using is very beautiful yarn. It is, let me see here, I'll show you. Oops. I'm holding it in my fringe association bag which I love except that I I bought it and I bought the wax that you can use to to wax the the um, the bag and I didn't do a good job with the waxing it was very uneven and it was I don't know I just didn't do it properly and it kind of made the fabric look dirty and I wasn't happy at all. So I put it through the washing machine to try and like get rid of that, um, that waxy buildup. And so now it's, it's kind of softened up a lot. It's not as stiff as it used to be, um, which I kind of, kind of makes me a bit sad, but I still love this bag. It's still a great bag, but it's looking, I mean, I use it a lot, so it's just looking not as nice and tidy as other people's fringe association bags, but that's okay. And I've got a couple of pins uh, like everybody else, I've got this really sweet uh, things will work out with crust, um, fingers crossed, and then this beautiful pin. Um, oh, I don't know, I can't remember her name. I will put it down here. She is um, an artist from like Lithuania, maybe? I'm not, well, anyway, I, I'll put all the information down, but. I think I saw, I first saw her stuff on the, uh, on 
Melody's uh, the, the Mandarin podcast, and uh, she's got some of her prints. And then uh, who else was talking about her? Oh, shoot. I was watching a podcast yesterday, and the person had bought... Oh, it was the uh, Stringing It Together podcast. Um, and uh, she had bought some prints uh, for a wedding present. And I just, I absolutely love this person's art. And uh, I would love to get some prints for my house. But anyway, all that to say, go, get back to what I was talking about here. Uh, the yarn I'm using is uh, Bare Naked Wools. And um, it is some really beautiful natural yarn. It's 100% Coriadale. And the color is nougat, and I believe it's a. It says that it's a sport weight, but it's funny because when you look at it like this, it looks quite plump, and and it does look like a sport to me. But um, but I I do find it. It's got that puffiness, but when you put any tension on it, it, it is quite thin. So even though the pattern calls for uh, fingering weight yarn, and this is a sport, I got gauge really, really easily with, with the sport weight yarn, even though it's heavier than, um, well, it's supposed to be heavier than, uh, than uh, loft, Brooklyn Tweed loft, which is a fingering. Um, I, like I said, had no problem getting gauge. Um, so yeah, so the, and actually I bought this yarn, was it last year or the year before? I bought it at Indie Untangled, which is the event that happens the night before Rhinebeck in Kingston. And I will be attending Indie Untangled again this year. I'm actually hoping to get there early enough to attend the Needles Up event, which is happening that afternoon in Rhinebeck. Um, and it is a smaller uh, kind of showcase uh, or vending event, I guess, uh, organized by the ladies from uh, the Legacy Knits podcast, uh, which is a podcast I absolutely love. So, um, and it's also, um, so there's going to be uh, several vendors. They're going to uh, be selling their yarn there. And then Andre Sue Knits is uh, selling her uh, sock blanks, I believe. Um, Amy Beth from the Fat Squirrel Speaks podcast is going to be send, uh, selling some of her project bags. Um, I believe the uh, Sucre Sucre um, Charms. Uh, they'll be sent, selling those. Um, I, I'm blanking on who else is going to be there, but anyway, that, that looks like it's going to be a really fun event. I'm not sure I'll be able to make it because I have to drive uh, to that area from, from Ottawa, and it's about an eight-hour drive. So I'm hoping to leave early enough to attend that, but I will definitely be at Indie Untangled. And uh, so anyway... Bare Naked Wools, they have uh, several different blends. They have quite a good selection, and it's all very beautiful yarn. It's a project that was, um, I guess, spearheaded by um, the, uh, oh, what's her name? The woman who does the Knit Spot um, pod, or not podcast, blog, I guess, uh, and who's a really prolific kind of lace shawl and sweater designer. She, uh, this is her yarn company, and uh, her yarn is really, really beautiful. So I, I love the way it's knitting up. Um, it is a very, very interesting and somewhat challenging construction. Um, I have to say, I'd never uh, knit a sweater in this way. You, you kind of start with back neck stitches and you do some short rows and then you do a braid and then you start working the the bot the you work some of the bottom and then you work some of the collar and you're doing a bunch of stuff at the same time and the pattern is incredibly well written as uh, all Brooklyn Tweed patterns are very detailed tons of pages um, but really really clear and the other thing is Elizabeth has um, there's a link for this PDF on, on Ravelry on the project page, but she also has kind of um, 
a PDF that you can download with tons of um, advice on you know what size how to choose your size and um, if you have some differences in row gauge because row gauge is important in this sweater mine was a little bit off but I was mindful of that and her advice really helped me with that but um, yeah it's a great pattern it's a lot of fun you know you're knitting and you're like I don't know what I'm knitting here I'm just blindly following the pattern it just it just seems like there's so much strange shaping happening at the beginning, but uh, eventually it all comes together. I did make one modification. Um, the pattern has you, um, you the collar is worked with a provisional cast on and you're working one side of the collar and then when you work the other side you, un you unpick that uh, cast on, that provisional cast on, and you graft those stitches together. Um, the only problem for me, and this is maybe just some um, ADD ten tendencies, is that when you do that, you're half a stitch off. And because this pattern is very strongly, um, like it's visually linear, it's got a strong linear quality to it, um, that really bugged me. So I ended up, now what did I do? I ended up uh, just casting on stitches, <clears throat> excuse me, and then um, then I knit it, but I had so I had a, a cast on edge here. And then I picked up stitches in the uh, sort of exactly parallel to uh, to you know how I was going to work on the other side. and what did I do? I, I intentionally created this little ridge just so that there would be a line that would divide those two sides so that if there was a bit of wonkiness, uh, it wouldn't, it would, the line would kind of basically um, just be a, a design detail. And because there's a lot of kind of different lines going in different directions, I thought that would work. Of course, this will not be here. I will darn that in, but I'm hoping that that will look nice. I think so. It's very tidy. When I looked at some project pages, I did notice a kind of some funny, funny stuff going on in a lot of people's collars, and um, I think for me, this is this was a nice, tidy solution. So. Anyway, gonna work, continue to work furiously. You can see here where I steam blocked and where where I didn't, but um, it's a great, great project, and it's a very beautiful, wearable uh, sweater. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted one that wasn't too big. Um, I've seen quite a few uh, projects where it was quite loose and very beautiful, but I just wanted a slightly more tailored one to go over dresses and uh, so I'm knitting the second size which is you know gonna be it, it's just gonna be a little more fitted on me not not negative ease but just uh, not not as floaty so uh, so that's like part one of my Ravel or my Ravelry my um, Rhinebeck uh, attire if you will I also sewed a dress. I don't often talk about sewing on the podcast, but uh, I'm super, super excited to um, to have finally sewed. I, I do a little bit of sewing here and there, and I have been not super successful in terms of uh, creating garments that I'm really happy wearing, but this one I am. I'm really very excited and I actually would love to make another one this week just because it's very fresh in my memory. I'm like, I know I could kind of, um, I could get, make another one really quite quite quickly, more efficiently. It's the Fen Dress by Fancy Tiger Crafts. It's a really sweet pattern. Uh, you can make it as a dress or as a top, and uh, you can also like vary the length of the skirt. So you could make it more like a tunic, or what I did was I made it a bit longer as a dress. And then there's also a V-neck and a round neck, and there's also an option to add a slightly longer sleeve. So I ended up doing this version of the dress 
like I said, a bit longer. And initially I did put a sleeve, but I, uh, I took it out and I'll, I'll explain why. So the dress, here it is. It's my, my Rhinebeck dress. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but basically um, it's just a very kind of floaty, loose dress. The fabric I used is um, this really beautiful denim, very lightweight denim fabric that has the, a kind of a diamond pattern and the Sorry, <laughs> not doing a very good job here. And this pattern is actually like little holes in the fabric. So it's got a really interesting texture. It's very, very fine uh, fabric. It wasn't expensive, but, um, but I love this fabric. It falls really, really well and it's, it's very comfortable. What I love about this dress is that it has pockets and I really love a dress with pockets. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. It's, it's very, like I said, very comfortable. It was very easy to sew. The instructions are wonderful. I really recommend this pattern. So like I said, I'm hoping to maybe make another one. Maybe not a dress, maybe I'll make a top instead. Um, I think it would be fun to try the, uh, the v-neck. So, so we'll see, but, uh, so I've got my dress, I've got my sweater. I'm there for two days, so I, I you know, it'd be nice to be able to, uh, to make another, another garment. Excuse me, I won't have time, obviously, to knit another sweater. But, um, you know, I have a few. Um, I, maybe I could wear this. This is um, the Stranger Cardigan. I don't remember the, uh, the designer. It down here. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern and it is knit in shelter in the fossil colorway. I've had this sweater forever. I really, um, I do like it. It doesn't, it doesn't fit me as, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm always kind of pulling it. Uh, it kind of tends to fall off a bit too. It's got kind of the detail go running um, on the back like that. It is very pretty, but uh, but I do like it. I like it a lot. I've worn it a ton. Um, and also last podcast, I was wearing a shawl and I meant to bring it. Of course, I forgot. Uh, and I got a lot of questions about it. It's one that I've talked about many times on the podcast, but just in case you were wondering what that was, it was the Arlan's uh, textured shawl recipe. Um, pattern, which is a great pattern. I really recommend it. It's it's just a very pretty and super duper easy shawl, and um, I I think every version I've seen I've loved. So it's a very versatile. It's a free pattern, and um, the yarn that I used was some Madeleine Tosh. It was yarn that I got in a yarn club. She. I don't know if she still does them. She she did a, a neutral yarn club, so all the yarns were in very pretty kind of faded neutral colors. And so the yarn was part of that. And I think it was the base of the yarn was not one that she usually carries. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a merino and silk base and it's very beautiful yarn, very, uh, just very luminous. Um, it's a single ply. Anyway. Just that's for those who were wondering about what I was wearing last time. I was kind of hoping that I would have time to finish the hap shawl that I've been working on for quite a while, which is somewhere around here. Um, I'm not going to dig it out. In any case, it's just a giant garter, gray garter uh, rectangle or square at this point. I finished the center panel, but I haven't yet done the border and I, there's no way I'm going to have time to, to finish it for Rhinebeck. So it's okay. I, um, I have, you know, years ahead of me to, <laughs> to do that and knit, uh, so many other things. Um, it's been really wonderful to finally have my mojo back and to be, to just feel like my knitting is not 
stressful. I mean, I have been a little bit under the gun just trying to get my Rhinebeck sweater done, but uh, but still, it is just really fun to just knit for myself. It's really exciting. Um, just going to get a little more water. I'm, I'm quite parched. I'm using my beautiful uh, moth cup by Janine Zlatkis um, that she made for me, which is really wonderful. Um, it's so beautiful and it has a caterpillar on the other side and uh, I just, I love it. It's so pretty, so beautiful. She's such a wonderful artist. Hi Janine. Um, okay, so what else? I have, oh, I have so many giveaway um, products <laughs> that I've received in the last few months that I have just not had time to talk about. And I still have to announce the winner of the Len Magazine issue number two, which is kind of pathetic because the show, issue number three is out now. Um, but I, I would like to do that now, so I'll announce that winner. And I would also like to just tell you about some beautiful things that were sent to me to uh, give away. I'm not going to do those giveaways today. I just want to show them so that... Um, so that you know that those uh, those giveaways are coming, and uh, yeah, so I I just feel bad like when people send me stuff and then it kind of sits there and I don't talk about these beautiful products that I've received. So let me uh, let me do that. So first of all, um, let me just get the name of the person who won the Len giveaway. I'll be right back. Okay, so for the Len Magazine issue number two giveaway, I drew, uh, through random number generator, I drew uh, a winner, and that is Jess F89. It's post number 78. And um, as a prompt, I asked, uh, I asked you, what place would you love to visit? Um, because Len often, well, actually, they always do a, um, a feature uh, a, of a city and uh, in their magazine and so um, so anyway hence I asked that question and it was so much fun reading all the answers and to read you know where people wanted to go and it definitely put a few more destinations on my bucket list uh, but Jess wrote of all the places I would love to visit I think Reykjavik Iceland has pushed to the top of my list Lopi Puffins and one of the most unique landscapes in the world what more could you ask for maybe more Lopi. Um, so Jess, congratulations. I will um, let the, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do that through either Ravelry or on Instagram. You can PM me. Um, I'm the gentle knitter on Instagram. Um, and uh, I will let the ladies at Len Magazine know that you are the winner and then they can just send uh, you a copy of of issue number two directly. So thank you to Len Magazine. I'm sorry it's so late. Um, I did buy uh, issue number three and it's absolutely beautiful. So I will talk about that a little bit later uh, when I talk about a couple of books that are or publications that I've acquired lately. But uh, anyway, congratulations, Jess. And I really do hope you get to go to Reykjavik. It's one of the most amazing cities I've been to. Uh, Iceland in general is just a really magical place and um, the landscape is truly unique like you said. So uh, anyway fingers crossed that you get to go and uh, definitely buy up some of that wonderful lopi. So uh, next up I wanted to talk about a few uh, beautiful items that I have received. Um, for giveaways and like I said I will be including them in future giveaways but I just wanted to talk quickly about them. Um, first I got these beautiful needle cases from uh, Soyun who is from Seoul, Korea and uh, she makes these very gorgeous um, handmade needle cases. Um, actually uh, they there's different 
uh, different types. She has a, an Etsy store. And the one I'll be giving away is this one. So it is uh, meant to uh, hold uh, interchangeable needles. So you've got uh, these little pouches to put your needles and then this pouch to put your cables. And then you've got a little pouch where you can put notions and then uh, again, more needles here and your cables. It's absolutely, the, the workmanship on this is exquisite. It's really beautifully done. The fabrics are gorgeous. I um, I love this kind of herringbone fabric and this beautiful button. Um, there's also a couple of loops where you can put uh, stitch markers and uh, yeah they're really gorgeous. The one that I decided to keep for myself, the blue one, no surprise here, um, I'm actually using it for um, my very budding um, crochet hook uh, collection and so I'm, I'm hoping to get more that I can uh, hold in, in this and I've got, oops, I've got a few notions in here. I've put my stitch markers on this little loop. I've got my little gauge, uh, little uh, measuring uh, ruler. Anyway, thank you so much, Soyun. These are really beautiful, and I know somebody's going to really love receiving your beautiful needle case. I encourage you to go and visit her Etsy store and uh, <clears throat> see if there's something in there that would help you organize. Who doesn't need more organization? I know I do. Um, next, I got some very, very beautiful yarn. Uh, two skeins um, of, oops, wrong one. There we go. Um, by the company Oysters and Pearls, and um, they generously sent these two gorgeous skeins. Um, this yarn is so beautiful. It is uh, naturally dyed, and it is non-super wash wool. And so here we've got. Um, it doesn't say the color name is Dew, and it is a hundred percent sustainable, traceable, super fine Australian merino, and um, it is just a beautiful, very, um, very luminous gray that is stunning. It's so so soft, and then this one is really gorgeous too. It's got um, some kind of creamy. Uh, yellows and then sort of a brighter yellow. I think knit up this would probably uh, create a, if you knit socks for instance, it would create a striping effect. And the color of this one is called Magnolia. And uh, there are, it's a four ply fingering weight yarn, 440 yards. So I will be, uh, like I said, giving these away in a future podcast, but I just thought I would show them to you. I really encourage you to go to the Oysters and Pearls shop. There's some really beautiful stuff in there. So thank you so much for that. Um, and I, I also received some yarn from uh, Blacker Yarns, and this is a, a a company I've been really wanting to try their yarn for so long. Um, they are a British company and they deal mostly with uh, British breeds. So all of their yarns are very natural, uh, rustic, but really beautiful quality, uh, generally really soft. And they also have a really beautiful palette of colors. And um, they contacted me because they were coming out with a, an anniversary um, blend that is kind of a limited, um, limited edition. It features a blend of yarns that are not kind of widely available. And so they uh, basically wanted to create um, a, an anniversary blend because uh, Blacker Yarns is celebrating an anniversary. I believe it's maybe 20 years. I could be wrong on that. But um, anyway, they created this very beautiful new blend called Brushwork. And uh, they very generously sent 
all these skeins to give away um, in these gorgeous colors. This, uh, oh, it says here, 12th birthday. Okay, well, I'm sure they'll be around for at least 20 more years um, because they're a really lovely company and um, the uh, the person who uh, is sort of takes care of these types of things, uh, Katie Green, who you might know from, um, she's an illustrator and she, um, does a lot of illustrations for Pom Pom magazine. Uh, anyway, she's the one who reached out to me to send me this beautiful yarn, and I really appreciate it, Katie. Um, if you don't know, Katie uh, also has uh, written a, an incredible book um, called Lighter Than My Shadow. It's actually a, a graphic novel. I wish I had it with me. Um, you know what? I'm going to go get it. Hold on. Okay, so the book I was talking about is called uh, Lighter Than My Shadow. It's um, a beautiful graphic uh, novel and, that Katie wrote, and it is a, an autobiographical um, counting or recounting of her, um, her story, which is um, a very difficult story. Um, it talks about her struggles with anorexia and uh, binge eating. It also talks about um, abuse that she suffered and um, it's just so beautifully done. It is a really important book. Um, I have to say I was really very moved reading it. Um, just the way that she captures in illustration, you know, the difficulties of growing up and of feeling like you just always have this cloud hanging over your head um, and, you know, trying to fit in and trying to find your way in the world and how, um, you know, unfortunately that can be very difficult for some people and especially it can leave you vulnerable to um, really bad situations and people who take advantage of that. So um, it's a little, like I said, it's, it's, it's a heavy subject. It's so incredibly beautifully done. Um, Katie is an incredibly intelligent and brave person to put this out and to use her own creativity and her art to transform these um, these negative life experiences into something positive and something that can help other people. Um, without going into any detail, um, a lot of this resonated with me and um, I really can't say enough good things about this book and um, you know it's just the the pacing of it I basically read it in one evening um, it I definitely am going to revisit it and take my time and really kind of appreciate every layout just the um, the creativity and the ingenuity of how she tells her story and um, how she portrays really complex um, emotions through uh, through just uh, little details in the drawings. It really is a really an amazing work of art. So um, I highly recommend it. It just came out in North America, so um, I would encourage you to get a copy and uh, also visit uh, Katie's Etsy shop. She has uh, her work for sale. Or, is it an Etsy shop? Actually, I think it's uh, her website. But anyway, I will put the information down. Super highly recommended. Um, but anyway, Katie works for Black Hair Yarns, and so she got in touch with me for the, the brushwork giveaway. So I will be talking more about that in the future. I will probably be giving that out, uh, giving it away fairly soon, because it is um, a, kind of a limited edition thing. But um, it's gorgeous yarn, and I received a little bit, uh, which I'm really looking forward to playing with for myself. So, 
Um, let's see, what else? I bought, uh, like I said earlier, I bought the uh, newest issue of Len magazine. It's gorgeous, as usual. I absolutely love, I love this publication. It is so just right up my alley. Even the ads, I'm always like, oh, just, um, it's just really, really beautiful. And I'm looking forward to knitting many of the patterns out of here. It's gorgeous uh, Rachel Koopy socks um, called Anouk. There's a gorgeous um, big uh, cardigan in here. Let me find it. Oh, this. Now, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's called the Teole uh, cardigan. The pattern is by Patricia Cox. Here's a kind of a close-up of the texture of the uh, of the fabric. It's just a big, cozy um, cardi that you would just want to wrap up in cooler weather. It's perfect, really beautiful. There's an article on uh, Marianne uh, Isiger, who has a very beautiful yarn company. And uh, there's also an article on um, on Viola Yarns, um, Emily Foden's yarn company, which I've talked about before. Emily is I'm very lucky to say that Emily is my friend, and um, I, I talked about visiting her place uh, a couple of episodes ago. This is uh, part of her living room. She lives in an old uh, general country uh, general stores, and you can see the old shelving uh, that the original shelving, uh, beautiful wooden shelving, and she's got all of her um, yarn there. That's all her uh, bases that she has not dyed yet, but her stuff is just magical. Here's some shelves filled with stunning yarn. She is such an artist, and I cannot wait to knit with the yarn I got. Talked about it a couple of um, episodes ago. Her beautiful, whoops, her beautiful uh, alpaca blend that, uh, oh, I love this yarn so much. It's so beautiful. I haven't yet found the perfect pattern, but when I do, look how moody the color is. It's like a a brownie pink and it's got almost like little grayish areas and it's yeah it this stuff is is really special so anyway I was super happy to see that there was an article on her and then um, there's also um, in one of the favorites they always have uh, photo essays with like their favorite objects. They've got a beautiful sock blank by uh, Maria from the uh, Ninja Chickens podcast and uh, she was talking about that uh, you know being excited that uh, her blank had been included in uh, in this magazine and you should definitely check out her latest uh, podcast. At the end she's got several minutes of um, filming on the kind of unveiling or opening up of, of uh, different uh, botanical print sock blanks that she's done and it's totally mesmerizing to watch her open them up and then peel off each leaf and just the beautiful colors that um, and the beautiful shapes that these uh, plant that the plant matter um, creates on her sock blanks. Um, I could watch that all day long. I would love, you know, how they have channels with like aquariums or, uh, you know, with fireplace. I would love a channel that just showed that all day long. It's super relaxing and magical. Anyway, Maria is an artist for sure. And uh, I bought one of her sock blanks and I don't have it here. I will show it to you next time. I haven't worked with it yet. So, um, 
so I I'll show it to you at another time I had so many things to show you today um, I think the last thing I wanted to talk about a couple more things um, is making magazine there's a new issue um, as some of you may know I work for um, for Carrie uh, on making and uh, and matter I do uh, technical support for patterns and um, but I'm also a subscriber and I absolutely love it's a another very beautiful issue um, I love how every issue has kind of like a color um, a palette if you will so all of the projects um, kind of fall into these beautiful warm colors last issue was more of like indigo blues and this issue has this really beautiful kimono jacket designed by Jenny Gordy and I would really love to make one of those um, I would love to find a very fine uh, wool fabric like a woven fabric but not thick so maybe like suiting but but not too stiff either um, and make a jacket like that I think it would be really very beautiful here's another photo of it in uh, in detail there it's very 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 pretty um, there's all kinds of things in here as usual just a beautiful issue um, there's a pattern to sew uh, bento bags and then of course a ton of gorgeous knitting patterns uh, I love this shawl by uh, Beatrice Perron Dalton it's like a mix of garter and cables there is a very very beautiful um, um, Icelandic yoke sweater designed by Mary Jane Mucklestone yeah just lovely there's there are toys there's a, a really pretty um, scarf and hat and lap blanket set by Carrie yeah just another really great issues this the theme of this one is lines and uh, I just think that uh, it just really is a great collection of all types of beautiful creative projects so I highly recommend that and not just because I work for them um, oh yeah so a couple of other things I'm like all over the place here I'm going from books to projects to giveaways um, but I did want to pull out my sorry my um, my mini memories blanket because I have made some progress on it. Oh my god, avalanche. If you could see <laughs> what is here, it is just piles of books and yarn and insanity. There we go. Alright. Oh. There. My cozy memories blanket. I'm I'm kind of have a square on the go here but uh, here it is whoops here it is um, last time I was uh, I had knit these three rows and so these two are my new ones and I love this thing it's so sweet Oh, look at that I really love I love the small squares they really they just make me smile um, I've got a few new yarns that I've started working in that I received from friends um, I met with uh, this woman Jose Labrie she is a uh, she teaches knitting she's a beautiful beautiful knitter um, and she's a very good friend of one of my colleagues and uh, so um, she had visited our museum. I work at a natural history museum and so I met up with her and then we decided to have a little uh, knitting lunch date and she brought me some really beautiful mini skeins uh, like this very pretty kind of um, pale pale kind of grayish pink. Um, what else did she bring me? 
she brought me a few more. I think this one is also from her. Um, and this one too. So anyway, that was really fun. And then I also met up with, um, with Selma from Little Big Knits podcast. And if you don't know her podcast, you should really check it out. It's wonderful. She's such a beautiful knitter and has such a gorgeous aesthetic. She always chooses the most beautiful projects. And uh, she also gave me some minis. I haven't uh, put them in my blanket yet, but I just wanted to mention that. Thank you so much, Selma. It was really lovely to meet you and I can't wait to hang out again. So is that it? I think that's it. Um, I should get going so I can maybe put finish that last inch on my Woodford's cardigan and uh, get maybe get going on the sleeves. But um, I really enjoyed talking to you today. It's been it's been really I, I've really missed talking to you and I do think that going forward there might be more time for me to record more often. So thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. Um, I do get a lot of lovely feedback and I don't always have time to uh, respond to all of them, but I do know that I read them all and it really means a lot to me that um, just all the lovely wishes, well wishes that I've received lately. Um, and um, it, it just, it really warms my heart. And I cannot wait to talk to you again and next time show you all the goodies from Rhinebeck. I am not making any promises, but I would like to maybe do a little bit of recording while I'm there and maybe show you some of the, uh, the beautiful things that, uh, that I saw there. So Anyway, I hope you're well, and uh, if I see you at Rhinebeck, or if you're at Rhinebeck, I hope to see you. I hope that you come up and say hi. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.